start today a study in the book of Nehemiah. And let me say this as we start. We are not going to do a historical study beyond the introduction. <coughs> but the introduction is so important we need to do a historical study. Otherwise, we wouldn't know why Nehemiah was even in the book. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Haggai, that came to pass in the month of the twelfth year, as I was in Shushan, the palace. He is dating when he starts this book. And the start of this book is very, very important. I'd like to open with a quote from J. Vernon McGee. And he simply says this, Ezra and Nehemiah are one book in the Hebrew canon. Some people read Ezra and Ezra, some people read Nehemiah. But if you were a Hebrew, you had to read them both together because they fit together. They are one book. In fact, it is a thought that Ezra wrote the book of Nehemiah. Ezra was a priest in the book called Ezra. The emphasis is upon the rebuilding of the temple. In the book of Nehemiah, the emphasis is upon rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. Even their building task was different. But why did they get in the mess they were in? Can go back farther to the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was a prophet who prophesied before the Babylonian captivity. And he said this, This whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, except the Lord, for their iniquity in the land of the Chaldeans and make it a perpetual desolation. How would you like if God said, hey, uh, got a little message for you. The next 70 years is going to be literally hell on earth for you. But don't worry. Don't sweat it. It's going to be better 70 years from now. And those people picked on you now, I'll take care of them later. But they got, oh, they're going to have a lot of fun with you for the next 70 years. Wow. You're going to scratch your head a bit, wouldn't you? We've learned because the captivity came because of sin in Israel. Never heard of Herb Lock, Doctor. He wrote several books, all the all the other all the other Bibles, all the prayers of the Bible. As we study Nehemiah. We're going to study his prayers because his prayer life really allowed him to be successful in his leadership. But we're also going to study briefly Ezra's prayer life because Ezra's prayer life also helped him be successful in his leadership. And the thing is, if we silently wait for the Lord, we sang this before we started, ready thy Lord, thy will to see if our prayer life is going to make a difference in our lives. And the lack of prayer will bring that captivity of our mind first to Satan and his thoughts. Or if we take it to the Lord in prayer, waiting totally and completely upon him, oh, what a blessing it is. Revival starts when people pray. And until you get serious with God in prayer, there's no revival. Jeremiah was also the one that told him that the restoration is going to happen. He said this, And thus said the Lord, 
that after 70 years be accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work toward you in causing you to return to this place. The next verse is so taken out of context by everybody today. Remember, this, was, this is a promise made to Israel about Israel, about Jerusalem. For I know the thoughts I have, I think, toward you. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. That is a literal promise to national Israel. Oh, we make secondary applications, forget the first application, don't we? Oh yeah, God, God knows. He, he had, had wonderful thoughts about us. He did give us, a, give us a, a peaceful time, and then we get into all kinds of problems. All kinds of disasters happen day after day after day. Yet we claim this promise. Well, we can't claim that promise. We're not Israel. That promise is for natural. We have our own promises, and they're better promises, by the way. Don't let me digress too far. We'll be able to get through part one of this introduction. Then along came some young men, and they went to into captivity. You've all heard of the, the Babylonian names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They got thrown in a fiery furnace because they, they refused to bow down. You've all heard about Daniel. He got thrown in the lion's den because he refused to, to, to worship like he was supposed to. And in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood my, by books the number of years where the word of God came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. He'd been a captive now for almost 60 years and suddenly says, wow, I've been here going through all this. But baloney, you could probably correct her, for 60 years, and now all of a sudden I understand, it took me 60 years to say, duh, <laughs> wake up, Daniel. Something's going on here. Jeremiah wrote about this, and now he understands it. Or at least he thought he did. Come to Dan Daniel chapter 9, and all of a sudden Gabriel shows up and gives him a, a very clear understanding here when he says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. So wait. Seventy weeks? I thought it was seventy years. For Babylon to fall, right? But now seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. And upon thy holy city, again, who is this to? It's to Israel and to Jerusalem. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and, to, and, prophesy, and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and, re and build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, three score, two weeks. Well, you talk about confusion. Well, seven and sixty-two make sixty-nine weeks, doesn't it? I thought you said seventy weeks. Now you're telling me sixty weeks. Wow, this seems to be getting more complicated all the time. That's why I said before we started this message, we're not talking about milk in the scripture today. We're not even talking about hamburger. We're talking about the whole side of beef. <laughs> okay? This is deep, deep, God-given truth that even took the Old Testament people years to figure it out 
And when they thought they had it figured out, they didn't really have it figured out even then. The streets will be built again to walk even in troublesome times. And after three score two weeks, in other words, in verse 25 it says the wall is going to be built during that first seven weeks. Okay? So now we've got a time, we've got a time framework. Somewhere from the decree to rebuild the wall till the wall is completed going to be a certain length of time. And then when that time is done, there's another length of time when Messiah is going to show up and be cut off. But not for himself. And the people of Prince shall come and destroy the city. Wait a minute, now some are talking about destroying the city. They talked about the city, what city? Jerusalem. Jerusalem had to be destroyed after Messiah was cut off, but not for himself. That's, I hope it's starting to make some sense to you. And the sanctuary, and the end of it shall be with a flood, and the end of the war, desolations, and are determined. And he, being the, the Antichrist who confirmed the, who destroyed the city, the spirit of Antichrist. Now he, the Antichrist, will confirm the covenant for many for one week. Whoops, wait a minute. Seven weeks, 62 weeks, and one week. That week has to be after Jerusalem is destroyed, after Messiah has been cut off. I don't know if you ever heard the word 70th week of Daniel in, in a prophecy meetings, but that's what we're talking about. And in the middle of the week, oh, mid, the middle of that seven-week period of time, as some people call the Great Tribulation, and midweek tribulation in the middle of that week, he's going to cause the, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Confused enough? I hope not. I couldn't find the right pictures I wanted. This is just a picture of the Rocky Mountains. But as you can see here, there's some mountain peaks in here. And what's interesting is you can see the mountain peaks and they all seem to get higher as it goes up the, up the line. When you look at this Daniel chapter 9, 24 to 27, it starts back here and it hits these mountain peaks of prophecy through time. From the decree to rebuild the walls all the way to glory. But now, you see what's not shown in the mountain peaks are the valleys. And this is the thing that's so surprising is that God did show one valley among the mountain peaks of prophecy here. That was the destruction of Israel, the destruction of Jerusalem. What about the mountain peaks? There are six of them listed here. Finish the transgression. Make an end of sin, make reconciliation, atonement for that iniquity. Bring in everlasting righteousness. Seal up the vision and prophecy. In other words, there was an end to uh, when you seal something, that, that means it's done. Where's prophecy done at? Book of Revelation. It's done. And anointing the most holy. When is he going to be anointed? When he comes to reign. Six mountain peaks. 
we're somewhere between Mountain Peak 1 and Mountain Peak 6, and maybe we're just down the valley. The first valley we've talked about was the destruction of Jerusalem. Four things that were said about it. There's going to be an invasion, a flood, destruction, and desolation. When you look at history, there is only one time in Jewish history after the nation returned from captivity in Babylon, which was the mountain peak. Remember the destructions after that. And that disaster was the war which engulfed the, Jew, the Jews in A.D. 66 to 73 when Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70. And what happened then? Everything mentioned in those four things in prophecy happened to Jerusalem at that time. In fact, they even took the stones and threw them in the water. They made causeways out of the stones of the city of Jerusalem. It was completely annihilated. But there's a mystery valley written about in Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations and now is made manifest to his saints. Understand this. If you are not a believer, you won't understand this. Don't feel bad. Because this mystery is only revealed to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's one of the valleys. That's in the valley. It was a mystery in the Old Testament. Oh, we can see all these things going on. Don't, if, if, if you're not a saint, you don't understand the valley. The first valley was Jerusalem destroyed. The second valley has to do with Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, I like charts as much as I like mountain peaks. And here's a chart of the 70 weeks of Daniel. The decree, which was in 45 445 B.C. And I get over here. And then you have the walls rebuilt. You have the time of the, of the 62 weeks and it comes out to 32 A.D. with a triumphal entry and the crucifixion of Christ a week later. You then have that valley of the church age. Hidden in here was also the destruction of Jerusalem. The church gets out of here and now we find Antichrist uh, Agreement, Daniel 9, 27, so that 70th week of the Great Tribulation, and at the end of that, Jesus Christ is coming back. Here he, he meets his saints in the air. Here he, he comes down to defend his saints on the, on the ground. There's an old brother... pastor who didn't want to be a pastor I felt very convicted because people didn't understand the Bible he wanted to teach people how to do the Bible he started a, a college called Grace down in Indiana he was the first uh, president of that school when he retired years later he became uh, President Emeritus. And he says this. And this, by the way, is, is a quote from his book, The 70 Weeks of Daniel. But I did the review that Ross Hayes did on it. He says, the most interesting part is the precise dating of Daniel's first 69 weeks. The decree to rebuild Jerusalem occurred in the month of Nisan in the 12th year of Artaxerxes the king. We get there, we'll look at it again, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. 
That's when the dating system started. This was March 14th, 445 BC. That's changing it to our dating system because we, as I mentioned last week when we were talking about Hanukkah, this is 5780. We don't understand the dating system of the Jewish calendar because the Jewish year was 360 days, not 365 and a quarter days. But that 360 days times 69 weeks times 7 years per week, because it was weeks of years, equals 173,880 days. Do you realize how far it was in the past when God really told him what was going on to the very day? To the very day. From March 14. 445 B.C. correspond to April 6, 32 A.D., the day on which the author says that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And a week later, they killed him. Well, we've cut the beef a little bit. We haven't made in the hamburger yet. But hopefully you'll see that it's a that it's it's a it's a cow. The whole side of beef, it's not a pig. It's not something that's un, unclean and shouldn't be sought after. Next week in part two of our introduction, we're going to look at the leadership on the return in the book of Ezra, which would include Zerubbabel, and then Ezra, and finally Nehemiah wants to know what's going on in verse 2 of chapter 1. I will take time to answer any reasonable questions at this